Charles IV, King of Bohemia and Holy Roman Emperor, had a long and successful reign. The empire he ruled from Prague expanded, and his subjects lived in peace and prosperity. When the emperor died, the whole empire mourned. More than 7,000 people accompanied him on his last procession. The heir to the throne of the flourishing empire was Charles' son, Wenceslas IV, whose father had prepared him for this moment all his life. But Wenceslas did not take after his father. He neglected affairs of state for more frivolous pursuits. He even failed to turn up for his own coronation as emperor, which did little to endear him to the Pope. Wenceslas the Idol did not impress the imperial nobility either. His difficulties mounted until the nobles, exasperated by the inaction of their ruler, turned for help to his half-brother, King Sigismund of Hungary. Sigismund decided on a radical solution. He kidnapped the king to force him to abdicate, then took advantage of the ensuing disorder to gain greater power for himself. He invaded Bohemia with a massive army and began pillaging the territories of the king's allies. It is here that my story begins. God bless. Same to you. Today's a scorching day. <laughs> well, husband, how goes it? Good. I should get it finished today. Where on earth is Henry? I need him to run some errands. He was still sleeping when I went out. At this hour? You blue-blooded idler. Well, it looks like he was out all evening, drinking like a lord. Mm. <laughs> Go and get the lazy bones up then. <laughs> Quick clout round the ear should do it.
Get up now. There's work to be done. Get up or I'll come get you up, you slug of bed. Hear that? You'd better not vex him. Now get up quick. Your breakfast is on the table. Wait, what's this? Have you been... Oh, Henry. How many times have I told you about fighting? Oh, that's nothing. It's just a scratch. You've been at that sword play again, haven't you? You'd better pray your father doesn't get to hear of it. You know how he feels about it. Oh, don't worry, it wasn't that. I, I just scratched myself is all. Hmm. Well, just don't come crying to me if you really do get hurt. Now get up, you rogue. You can't be serious, Deutsch. Insulting our king. What insult? I say only the truth. Sigismund has done only what he had to. Had to? He had to abduct the king. He had to lure his cousin Prokop into a trap and imprison him. He had to invade with his army of Tatars and besiege Kutenberg. Why not? What is this Wenceslas for a king? The empire is falling asunder in his hands. The German counts elected Ruprecht of the Palatinate as king because your Wenceslas would not go to their deeds even. German counts? Traitors? Now even the Pope God be with you, Henry. I'm with you, Matthew. What's going on here? Deutsches spouting shit. What? Just listen and you'll hear for yourself. Someone has to bring order and reunite the empire. <laughs> what do I care about the Austrians? And nowadays, not even the devil himself can keep up with all the popes. Which is the rightful pope? The one in Rome or the one in Avignon? Do not blaspheme, Alex. No, it's true, though. Winceslas is the king of Bohemia. Bohemian nobles are on his side. To hell with Rosenberg and his cabal. Sir Ratzik is Wenceslas' commander-in-chief. He stayed loyal to the king. And if he heard you talking like this, he would have you whipped like a dog. Your deal will soon have nothing left to rule. Jobs had to sell Luxembourg to help your king. South Bohemia is with Sigismund and... don't and forget about Kutenberg, where Germans like you kissed Sigismund's feet to keep their heads. Yes, but... Goodman Deutsch, this is pointless. Let us talk of more pleasant things. My words exactly. Deutsch has gone too far. Wenceslas is our rightful king. Deutsch is an idiot. But what can you do? I might have an idea. Deutsch deserves to be taught a lesson. Doesn't he, Fritz? You too, I Matthew. You should give him a proper hiding. If are you mad? Do you want to end up in the pillory? Don't listen to Fritz. I've got a better idea. Deutsch was talking such shit, it made me think of that huge pile of manure. You know, the one right next to his freshly whitewashed house. <laughs> you think we should redecorate for him? Count me in. Well, I'd rather touch it, to be honest. But, doing some turns will do. What do you say, Henry? But I was going to get ale for father and a, a few other things. We're finishing Sir Ratzik's sword. Come on, throwing a few handfuls of manure is not going to take all day. And it's our duty to defend the honor of our king. So, how? Are you with us? Right, let's see what kind of job the master in Sassau did for us. <laughs> Look at that lad. That's what I call craftsmanship. What does the inscription mean? Damn if I know. Doesn't look like Czech to me. Latin, maybe? Lord Radzig ordered it. Oh, this will be the finest sword I've ever made. Have we got the charcoal? Good. And fire up the forge. We'll put it all together. By the way, I heard some gossip about what happened to Deutsch. I expect you know something about it. Maybe. Maybe. 
Someone threw dung at Deutsch's freshly lime-washed house, maybe. And maybe those cronies of yours had something to do with it. That Deutsch was talking treason in the tavern about Sigismund and the King. He got what he deserved. Oh, got what he deserved, did he? Look, I don't know if you're mixed up in this or if it's just those friends of yours. It's all the same to me. But I have a trade to run. The German pays well. And having my son in the pillory helps nothing and nobody, least of all the king. Do you understand? Yes. Look me in the eye, Henry. Do you understand? I understand. Good. Then we'll never have this conversation again. Well, so you think it's right to let traitors speak ill of the king? Does that boy ever listen to a word I say? So Deutsch spouts rubbish. So what? You might win a fight with violence, but you'll never win an argument. Remember, Henry, if you want to convince someone that they're wrong, try using your mouth, not your fists. The furnace is ready. Right, we'll do the grip. I'll heat it up, and when I take it out, you slip the grip on so it fits exactly. You know what you're doing. Do it. Good. Once more. That's it. Done. Now file it down so it sits well in the hand. I'll prepare the guard. Father, why did you leave Prague? Who ever heard of a master swordsmith making horseshoes in a village? <laughs> I had my reasons, Hal. And here I have your mother and you. Why would I want any other life? Do you remember Emperor Charles? I do. Life was good under his reign. Better than now. He built half of Prague and a score of castles, had a bridge made over the Moldau and founded a university, and all without a war. He knew how to rule. Better than Wenceslas. Better by far. But Wenceslas doesn't have it easy. It's hard to step into the shoes of someone whose like is born only once a thousand years. What about Sigismund? Do you think Charles would have brought an army down on his own people like Sigismund? No. Wenceslas may not be the equal of his father, but Sigismund, he brings shame to the royal name. How's it going? Give it here, and we'll put it all together. It's magnificent. Indeed it is. The Lord be with you. My father sent me for those nails. Good day to you, Teresa. They're ready. Will you fetch them for me, Hal? They're in the trunk in the living room. Fine lass, eh? Now, stop staring at her and come and see this. It's time for the trial by fire. We did a fine job. I would expect nothing less from such a renowned swordsmith. 
Well, those days are gone, sir. Hmm. You haven't lost your skills, though. Would you like to try it? Sir, what good is a sword to a commoner? try it. You still have a lot to learn. Ask your father to show you how. He knows what he's about. Learning his trade will serve him better in life, sir. Perhaps. But who knows what the future holds for each of us. I see that you almost have it finished. It just needs a polish, then Henry will bring it to you. Excellent. Fine work, very fine. A sword such as this will bring honor to its bearer. What say you say, Svan? True, Sir Radzik. If I'd have had its like back in Nicopolis, things would have worked out differently. How odd to find such an accomplished swordsmith working in a place like this. A man of his talent would have no problem making a fortune in Prague or Vienna. You're right. It's a very long and peculiar story. I'd be glad to listen to it over a cup of wine, but duty calls and I must leave. Here you are. Learn from your father. He truly is a master of his craft. I'm sure our paths will cross again. They certainly will. Once it's ready, send your son up to me with it. Good work, Martin. Sure. It's been an honor, Sir Isfa. Have a safe journey to Sassau. The honor is mine, Sir Radzik. Thank you for the hospitality. A long, peculiar history. That was a long time ago. I might tell you about it sometime, but not today. Will you teach me how to use it, like Sir Radzik said? Why? Well, it could come in useful. Maybe I'll travel a bit before settling down. I'd like to know more than the tavern on the green in the forge. You know the trouble with an adventurous life, son? It can end before it gets started. I might teach you how to handle a sword, and then someone will shoot you with a crossbow as soon as you set foot outside the house. You talk as if you've seen it happen. A man my age has seen a lot. Being a blacksmith might bring no glory, but it has its benefits, like keeping your head on your shoulders. I want to end my days in scallets, here beneath the linden tree and by your mother's side. Well, so do I, one day. But first, I'd like to see the world, meet new people. Meet them or beat them? Meet. You have to keep going on about it. <laughs> then you've no need to learn swordplay. A messenger. He was in a hurry. What's happened? Take the sword, go into the house, and grab anything else important from the trunk. Go to the castle. Hurry! And what about you? Your mother is in the village. I'll fetch her and we'll follow right behind. I'll go with you. No! You'll do what I say right now. Give the sword to Sir Radzik. If anything happens, he'll take care of you. He owes me.
Move! Come on, we're closing! Move in, people! Come on, come out on! Of time. Oh, Henry, thank God. Get inside, quick, we have to shut the gates! Get running, people, come on! Mind this for me. Are you mad? You can't go back! Get through the gates! Someone give him a drink and bring hot wine and bandages. Tell me, boy, who are you and where are you from? What in hell's name happened? I've come from Scalitz. They burned it to the ground, slaughtered everyone. Who? Who burned it to the ground? A huge army. They attacked without warning, and, and they weren't Czechs or Germans either. Who then? I don't know. I've never seen armor like it or heard their language. Maybe Tatars? Tatars, you say? Yeah. Well, we'll deal with that later. 
First, let's have a look at that leg of yours. With your teeth, boy. I'm gonna pull that hair out. Easy. All done. You were lucky, lad. The arrow missed the bone. It only needed bandaging, and I've done that often enough before. War is a good teacher. Can you stand? There you go. Good as new. Thank you. If you idlers nothing better to do, get back to work. You'll have to speak to Lord Divish. Can you manage? Sir, this is a survivor from... I heard, Robart. Tell me, boy, what exactly happened? Did you see the insides of the attackers? And were there any more survivors? So, um... I don't know what army it was, but it was huge. There were dozens of banners flying on the hill above Scalitz. And the ones who did the slaughtering spoke a, a, a strange language. They burned Scalitz to the ground. But a lot of people took refuge in the castle. I wasn't quick enough. And as I fled, they shouted from the battlements that I should come and warn you. The soldiers the boy didn't recognize. They could be those Cumans of Sigismund's. It said they came to Hungary from the east, and now they're the core of his army. Sacking Gutenberg must have given him a taste for stolen silver. Scalus is a small castle, sir. If Sigismund attacks, they can't hold. Indeed, Sir Robard. And our small garrison would be no help, even if we could risk sending them. You think we're next in line? Maybe. What's your name, boy? I'm Henry, son of the Scalitz blacksmith. I know him. Did he make it inside the castle? I'm sorry. It's in God's hands now. No one else can help us. Anyway, thank you for risking your neck to warn us. Robard, take care of Henry. Make sure he gets something to eat and some rest. Yes, sir. And get all the people inside the gates. We have to prepare for the worst. Make all the necessary arrangements. As you command, sir. Ah, milady. You are fortunate our good lady Stephanie of Talmberg has graced us with her presence. My lady, I'm honored. So this is our brave young man. Welcome, lad. Bojana here will take care of you. No doubt you're tired and hungry. <laughs> Indeed. How could he not be, poor soul? After everything he's been through, he must be as hungry as a bear. Aren't you, young master? Here you are, then. Eat your fill. And a little wine to wash it down. Thank you, my lady. <clears throat> when you're done, you can go and rest with the grooms in the outer valley. No, that won't do, Sir Robard. After all he's been through, he deserves a proper bed. Let him sleep in a lodge in the courtyard. Certainly, my lady. Young Henry here is overwhelmed by your generosity. Oh, yes, yes, thank you, my lady. May God reward you for your kindness. Eat up now. You're in capable hands, so I'll leave you to it. Good night. Good night. Good night, ma'am. When you've done, you can sleep in the bedchamber of the courtyard lodge. And don't forget to take off those filthy boots before getting into bed. Today the patrols will be doubled. Keep your eyes peeled. If you see any...
anything out of the ordinary. Report it immediately. Understood. Yes, sir. Yes? It is I, Henry. Forgive the intrusion. I didn't wake you, boy, did I? Uh, my lady, uh, um, no, no, not at all. But what brings you here at this hour? I thought you could do with a little wine. It's just what you need to help you sleep. My lady, thank you. You really shouldn't. You could have sent a servant. I was going to, but to tell you the truth, I couldn't sleep either. I thought of you while saying my prayers. How awful it must have been for you. I came to offer you solace, to let you know you're not alone. Thank you. Thank you kindly. You're welcome. Now, Henry, I know this is all very new and strange for you. But I want you to feel at home here. You're not to worry about anything except getting better. God knows you've been through a terrible ordeal. I know what it is to be left alone in the world. Although your loss is much greater. But with God's help, the pain will ease in time. And it can help to talk about it. If you feel like it. That's terrible. How could something like that happen? God alone knows why he lets such things happen. You poor boy. I understand your grief, but God is not to blame for the ills of this world. That is the work of Satan and those who do his bidding. Those who are corrupted by greed, envy, and pride. You must not lose faith, whatever life brings. Fate has not been merciful to me. And my husband, either. Although in comparison to the horrors he went through. I was young when I married my husband. It was my father's wish. Divish was a lot older than I, but a woman must bear her lot. Shortly after our marriage, before I even got a look at Talmberg, the castle was stormed and my husband was imprisoned. Really? My husband had some quarrel with Sir Havel Medek of Valdek, who decided to resolve it by force. He stormed the castle, burned down the village of Pribislavets, and killed many of our men, even the old Chamberlain. He imprisoned my husband in the castle and put his own garrison there. That's awful. I was barely 18 years old, and... All of a sudden, I was left alone with Sir Robert. We didn't know what to do. We went to Prague to appeal to the king and sought help from Divish's friends, but all to no avail. We tried for years, but it seemed I was destined to be left alone and my husband to rot in jail in his own castle. Years, you say? Seven years. That's how long it took before Havel was condemned as an enemy of the crown. And even then, he refused to surrender the castle and release my husband. In the end, I raised the money to pay a ransom. And only then, by the grace of Lord Jesus, did I finally lay eyes on my husband once more. Seven years. And was Havel punished for it? Never. And after seven years, my husband returned to me an infirm old man. Sir so Divish seems like a good, strong man. Well, certainly, only he has many concerns. He had to rebuild Talmberg, 
After he was released, the king appointed him Burgrave of Prague Castle, and he was very busy. He had no time for me at all. But at least we were in the city, and there was something going on. And now, we're here. My lady, you are still young and beautiful. Your best years are still ahead of you. Would that that were true, lad. Would it were true. But what am I doing bothering you with this? You have troubles enough of your own. I'll go and let you sleep. I enjoyed our little talk, Henry. Good night, and God bless. Good night, my lady. Lucifer and all his minions! Who else, Robert? Sir Antic! What a relief! Is his lordship there with you? Yes, sir, he is right here. What are you doing up so late, Divish? At your age, you need a good night's sleep. <laughs> well, Rantic, you didn't exactly pick the best time for an outing either. In a big hurry? It was a bit of a scramble, all right. Believe it or not, this tempest is a godsend for me and my men. As my old granddad used to say, better a sore throat than a slit throat. I'd say your grandfather was a wise man. Your messenger told us what happened. Messenger? The lad you sent to warn us. He's alive? He made it to you? He's here with me. He only got away by the skin of his teeth, though. Thank God. A brave young man. But tell me, friend, how on earth did you manage to get away? Thank God for this tempest. When it began, Sigismund's Tatars crawled into their holes and left a storm in the castle for more clement weather. We were able to sneak out right under their noses. The Lord be praised. We wouldn't have stood a chance against them. Would you like to spend the night in Tumber? No, no. When Sigismund finds the castle empty tomorrow, he might come looking for us. We'd only be exposing you to danger. Without me and my men, he has no call to attack you. Well, what will you do then? We'll march to Ratai. It's only a short way, and there we'll have a better chance of defense and enough room for all of these people. If Sigismund should come, better bend your knee, Divish. There's no point dying in a battle that's futile. You're right there. Is that boy still with you? I'm here, sir. You have courage, lad. That I can't deny. I am sorry about what happened. Would you care to join us? I'd like to, sir, but first I have to return to Scalitz. Are you mad? What do you want there? I can't leave my mother and father. I won't leave their corpses rotting in the street. I'll join you once I've taken care of them. Don't even think of going back there, you donkey. Are you tired of living? But sir! Quiet! I'm sorry about your father, but getting killed as well won't help him. Divish? Make sure that lad doesn't budge from Talmberg until things quieten down. Not to worry, friend. Anyway, he's injured and needs to recover. I'll lock him up here as if he were Havel of Baldic. <laughs> I've seen you've grown a thick skin since your tribulation, sir. But thank you. We'll meet again when circumstances are more favorable. Farewell. Farewell, friend. And good fortune. 
Give my regards to Sir Hanish. I will. And good luck to you and your people too. These are dark times. Move out! self-appointed king wins the love and respect of his loyal subjects. Indeed, Robard. Sigismund of Luxembourg has a rare talent for winning people over to his cause. You may be in for a surprise. I don't think he will set his heathen dogs on us today. Greetings, Lord of Tomberg. <laughs> That's the bastard who let the attack of Scarlet and kill my parents. Don't be an idiot. Do you want to end up like them? I am Sir Mark Bart von Aulitz. I come in the name of Sigismund of Luxembourg, King of Hungary and Croatia, who has resolved to strike against those who disrupt Concord in the land and to restore order in the name of his brother, King Wenceslaus IV. Restore order by burning and pillaging the king's estates. Greetings, Sir Markvart. The efforts of the king's brother to bring order to this chaotic land are undoubtedly noble. It seems to me, though, that he and his army have somewhat strayed. As burgrave of Prague Castle, I am entirely beholden to the king. And here in Townberg, divine peace reigned until your arrival. To what then do we owe the honor of your visit? Yesterday, His Majesty took action against the enemy of the kingdom, the Ratzig Kobila, who has been using the silver from the Scarlet's mine to fund insurrection against the crown. Unfortunately, the insurgent escaped. Would you happen to know, noble sir, where he might be at this time? As far as I know, the Sir Radzik, of which you speak, is the king's hetman at Scarlet's. I find it hard to imagine that he would rebel against our king. Nevertheless, I can assure you that Sir Radzik is not at Talmberg. He would be a fool indeed to flee from one castle, where he has little chance of defense, to another, where he has even less. Or do you take the view that my humble manner is any obstacle to your army? Am I to inform the king then that Zeratsi Kobila is not a Tarnberg and that he has your loyalty? Sir Radzig Kobila is not here, and I have no intentions of getting embroiled in affairs from which I have nothing to gain. Very well, sir. As you wish. I will relay your words to the king in the hope he will be as well disposed as you seem to be. Those who have clean consciences and good will may find themselves well disposed even at moments like this, when there is little cause for joy. Farewell, sir. Auf Wiedersehen. My lord, you have my utmost admiration. Get on with you, Robard.
Why did you do it to me, Father? Why? Why did you leave me? Forgive me. Forgive me for everything. Next time I won't run. I'll never run away again. The one who did this to you. I remember his face. I'll find him. But first, I have to find the shovel and take care of you. I remember you told me you wanted to lie beside mother. Here. Under the linden tree. At least I can do that much for you. you must. Get away, you beast! What's going on? Fishak? What in God's name are you doing? What do you think I'm doing? Digging turnips? The beast just went for me. Isn't that Mutt the butcher's? Mutt. Um, isn't that body the butcher's? Yeah, that's him. What's that got to do with anything? So, let's get to it. Done it all. How am I going to do this? Do you need some help? Is that him? Yes. Can't you see the sword? Who are you? What do you want? Is Bishek? 
Who do you think we are? Franciscan brothers? <laughs> We're here to rob you of everything you've got. Especially that fine blade that's of no use to a peasant like you anyway. Banish the thought. It is my father's sword. You mean him? I don't think he's going to be needing it. Listen here, boy. You hand over that sword. I might just let you go. If not, you're in for a family reunion you really don't want. Leave me alone. Kill him, Runt. I cut the bastard down. As you like. Could have just cost you a few teeth. Ah! Chief is going to like it. It's new, isn't it? Now, for the maiden bloodletting. Surely your father never would have imagined it would be your blood. I believe there's a word for such moments. The old man would certainly know. But I'm just a common killer. Did you help make it? No doubt you did. Such miserable luck. To die by the sword you helped forge. Hey, go fuckers! <laughs> the games are over.
you need some help? Day. Henry, can you hear me? Hallelujah. I thought you'd never wake. Were you having a nightmare? Uh, Teresa? Hmm. You still have a fever. Uncle won't be pleased, but you'll have to stay in bed. Where am I? In Scalit? We're at my uncle's mill in Rattay. I didn't know where else to go. What happened? You don't remember anything? I suppose that's not surprising. I found you in Scalit after those bandits attacked you. I thought they'd done for you. But you were still breathing. Why in heaven's name did you go back there? It was madness. We slaughtered everyone who didn't run. My parents, I... I wanted to bury them. I had to... Don't worry. I took care of it. Thank you. Any good Christian would have done the same. Now sleep. You need your strength back. Your graces, I have to tell you in all seriousness that this land of ours is in the shit. Deep fucking shit. Don't you agree? I might not have put it as eloquently as you, Hanush. But I've been driven out of my own castle, so I'm hardly going to disagree. Indeed. The Pirkstein is yours for as long as you need it. There's room enough for your men and you here at Rattay, and I'm sure my ward won't have any objection to me lending you his castle. I'd be honoured. Pirkstein is at your disposal as long as you wish, Your Grace. Just as well you have another castle at the other end of town, eh? <laughs> Ah, uh, at any rate, I'm beholden to you, Sir Hans, and to you, Sir Panosh. I don't like to speak ill of your people, Sir Radzik, but, well, there's no love lost between the townsfolk and the refugees. There's been talk of criminality. Well, they'll have to get used to it until the situation's resolved. But when will it be resolved? And what on God's earth is this war even about? I won't lie, sir. I don't understand it. You aren't alone, Father. I believe Sigismund's original intention was to persuade Wenceslas to accept the Imperial crown and to leave the rule of Bohemia to him. Well, who could blame him? I know Wenceslas is a friend of yours, Radzig, but even you have to admit he brought it upon himself. I can't deny the king neglected affairs of state for other pursuits. There is a need for order in the land, but I don't think the lords who sided with Sigismund realized just what Hungarian order looks like. <laughs> Hungarian order. <laughs> what concerns me, sir, is how a good Christian could resort to such brutality. To give him his due, I don't think he expected the lords of this country to stand behind the king. But thanks to him, we're tearing ourselves apart, and now he has to get things under control. But why in God's name does he have to use those barbarians? Money is the root of all evil, young sir. Wars are costly, and this one has dragged on for a year. Sigismund ran out of coin for knights, so he recruited those whore sons that settled in Hungary. The less he pays, the more they make up for it with plunder. That's why he attacked us. He was after our silver. What are you doing? You have no business here. Clear off. Wait, it's Henry. Henry, who disappeared after I clearly ordered him to remain at Taunberg. I'm sorry, sir, but I have to bury my parents. Had to? Do you think you were the only man who lost someone there? But the others listened to their lord. And it wasn't just your own life you nearly threw away. So Robard and his men risked theirs to save you. I'm sorry, but I had to. No, oh, there you go. When you have to, you have to, Radzik. <laughs> your father was a remarkable man. And your mother, well, she was remarkable too. 
They deserved a Christian burial. Did you manage that at least? No. I was attacked by thieves. I wouldn't be here now if it wasn't for that girl. Girl? The miller's daughter, Teresa. <laughs> the miller's daughter saved you from the footpads? Oh, there's a tale to tell your children. Uh, I owe her my life. She distracted them and then brought me to Ratai. But without Sir Robard, we'd both be dead. Oh, that's what I call a good woman. Hang on to that one, lad. Still, it's a great shame your parents are buried in unconsecrated ground. That means purgatory for them. Be quiet, friar. I didn't invite you here to eat me out of house and home and deliver a sermon while you were doing it. If you're so concerned, Father, maybe you should save the innocent souls of these fine Christians yourself. Go to Scalitz and consecrate their graves. I assure you, if you're killed by bandits, your soul will soar straight to heaven, as long as someone buries you in consecrated ground first. If there's anything left to bury, that plump carcass of yours would be quite a feast for the wolves and the crows. And one skeleton looks much like another, so how would we know which were your ordained bones or those of Sigismund's Tartars? Be that as it may, why have you come here? I must get your sword back. Sword? My sword hangs here at my side. No, the sword my father forged for you. One of those thieves stole it from me. They almost killed him and he already wants to go back. Takes after his father, I suppose. Lad. I've lost a castle, a village, silver mines, and a good half of my subjects. Why would I miss one sword? Because it's the last one my father forged, and I promised him I'd deliver it to you. I understand. I'd feel the same way. But prudence is the better part of valor, and a dead man keeps no promises. Aye. The woman had to save his fat from the fire, and now he wants revenge. What kind of fool are you, boy? He's no fool. Henry, you have courage. But you need training, arms, a horse. Or do you mean to beat this thief at dice? No, sir. Please, take me into your service and give me the chance to learn these things. The gall of him. Fled from the enemy, disobeyed your orders, duped Sir Divish, lost your sword, put Sir Robard in danger with his actions, and now he wants a promotion. Sir Capon's right. What you say is certainly true, except for fleeing the enemy. You would have run as well, believe me. Henry's earned some punishment, but how do you punish someone who's already lost everything, hmm? Courage and blind obedience are good qualities for a soldier, but a wise man also appreciates loyalty, perseverance, and determination. Besides, that was a fine sword that his father made. If he thinks he can get it back, I won't turn it down. My lord, he's a peasant. You can't make a squire of a peasant. Why not? Someone made a priest of a pig. He isn't a peasant, father. He's a blacksmith. And recent events have left me in need of his skills. So, would like to enter my service? Sir, I... Yes, I would. You won't regret it. <laughs> oh, I probably will. I'm doing this for your father, lad. Don't disappoint me. Oh, fortune has finally smiled on you today, lad. Make the most of it. Now that I think about it, Sir Hanush, the boy needs training and experience, and you need spear carriers. Hmm. That's true. Bailiff is always complaining about your people making trouble in the camp. Maybe one of their own among the guard might help. It might. In any event, it will prove valuable experience. <laughs> but let's be clear. You're the one paying him. <laughs> Captain Bernard, see to his training, and then send him to the bailiff. Yes, sir. And don't spare him. You can rely on it, sir. Don't forget, Henry. Don't disappoint me. I won't, my lord. That's it, then. I don't like to say it, but it wasn't that bad. I don't know why you're wasting your time, Sir Bernard. Nothing will come of him anyway, and at the first sign of trouble, he'll run away like any other cowardly peasant. After all, he's done it before. What did you say? Calm down, boy. Keep in mind who you're talking to. The braggart who was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. Now, you've really done it. You'll go to the stocks for that. Calm yourself, Sir Bernard. If the blacksmith's boy feels he can prove himself, then let him try. Do you think you can beat me? 
Well? Any time. Very well. If you defeat me, I'll give you my bow. If you lose, you'll have to pay up. Do you even have any coin? I have enough. Good. Then let's get to it. Well, I didn't expect that. Probably just wasn't your day, sir. I told you I have a heavy hand. Ever since I fell off that horse during the last hunt. What are you grinning about, boy? I think you owe me a little payback. How about a sword fight at the arena? If you like. Sir Hans, is this necessary? Sir Hans has already had words about you fighting with your subjects. He explicitly told me. I know what he told me. You can just tell him I didn't listen to you. So what's it going to be, blacksmith? If we must. Excellent. Then let's go. Well, you got the better of me this time, blacksmith. I must be having an off day. Are you all right, sir? Don't worry your mangy head about me, peasant. We'll see each other again soon enough. You can keep my bow. It's best years behind it anyway. And the canon of St. Wenceslas in Olomouc was so drunk. <laughs> he dragged the pig to the market square, saddled it up, <laughs> and rode it out of the town gate. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we can, we can see, we can see that this wasn't going to end well. So, Sir Peter and I rode off to look for the good cannon on his pig. <laughs> pig to find him. <laughs> we tracked the filthy beast down to a sty beyond Cronau. I mean, the beast with a tonsier on its head. <laughs> we never found the real pig, but the Reverend was sound asleep in the pig sty. <laughs> Birds of a feather stick together. <laughs> it seems the same goes for pigs and planets. <laughs> <laughs> I toast, gentlemen, to pigs and planets. God save the bacon. <laughs> Sir Hans, forgive my intrusion, but I need... Oh, but what? You uh, want to join us? Want to <laughs> buy us around? <laughs> I'm afraid we don't drink with peasants. You're not in your village now, boy. No, sir. <laughs> Curfew's been rung. The alehouse is closing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing closes while I'm sitting here. If that's all, you're dismissed. Are you out of your mind, lad? You can't cross his lordship. He's got a temper like a bear with gut egg. If I was you, I'd get lost before he shows it. The bailiff instructed me to close the tavern at the proper hour. He doesn't want anyone disturbing the peace after curfew. The bailiff? The bailiff can kiss my ass. I trust you haven't forgotten who's the rightful lord of Ratte. No, it's Sir Hannes. Oh, is he here? Or is he hiding under the table, maybe? <laughs> no! Then what he wants isn't worth a fart in a bathhouse. And besides, he's only in charge till I grow up. <laughs> Which clearly hasn't happened yet. Enough! You can't talk to me like that. I'm a nobleman. Come now, sirs. You're not going to fight here, are you? We most definitely are. This yokel needs to be taught his place. Crucifix! Uh, 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 what in the name of Christ is happening here? Hell! Answer me, damn you! This peasant insulted me. I had to teach him a lesson. By rolling around in the mud like a hog? That's a fine example of noble conduct. Sir Hannes, the bailiff ordered me Silence! to... Silence! You shut your mouth and thank your lucky stars that you are Radzig's ward. Have you gone out of your mind? Raising your hand to a nobleman? And you, Hans, how many times have I told you that drinking with your subjects might be good for their morale, but it's bad for your honor? <sighs> you spend all your days... Drinking and chasing wenches, which wouldn't matter if you paid any attention at all to your duties. And now we see what that leads to. Tomorrow, you will go with me to a hearing. Some landowners have asked me to settle a dispute. It'll be an excellent lesson for you. I had planned to go hunting, but if you think listening to the pointless gripes of a bunch of old fools will benefit me, so be it. Oh, hunting. Well then, your grace, I'll tell you what. You can go hunting. Really? Oh, naturally. Who am I to deprive the young Lord Capon of his sport? And you can take Henry here as your page. Him? 
Absolutely not. You'll do as I've commanded. It's time you learned how to lead people, and not just in drinking and brawling. Now get out of my sight. Sir, I have responsibility to the bailiff. Not I anymore. Your responsibilities now are the Lord Capon. It's time you learned how to behave in the presence of nobility. Let's go. Tell the kitchen I'm hungry. It's been a long journey. Here I am. I'm overjoyed. Have you got a horse? Yes. Really? What is it? A cart horse? Actually, it... Never mind. I don't really care. Just try to keep up with me and don't fall off. You want to take him down with an arrow? Certainly. Why, why wouldn't I? You won't kill him like that. The boar is hunted with spears. Is that so? So now all of a sudden you're a master huntsman, are you? Watch and learn. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> Damn, I'm good. <laughs> Quiet. So next time you try to tell me I can't kill a boar with an arrow, you can... <laughs> After him. Fetch! Mount up, Henry! Chase down that swine! Let's have a look at you. Are you injured? Henry! What the fuck happened? You turned up uninvited at some human social gathering. And you took them all? So it seems. God's holy britches! I never knew you had it in you, Henry. Remind... Uh, remind me never to get on the wrong side of you. That wound on your head doesn't look good. <sighs> Not to worry. I'm sure it doesn't look half as bad as it fucking feels. <clears throat> You'll have to help me get back to Rate. Come along then, sir. It's Lord Capon! Get here, everybody! You, help him! How is it possible, Rat? Those bastards make so bold no more than a mile from the castle. We'll have to send out more patrols. That won't do us any good, Hanush. Even if we had ten times the men, we couldn't beat through every thicket in the fiefdom. You sent for me, sir? Come in. I don't know how to thank you, Henry. If it wasn't for you, Hans would be dead. And to think I sent you out with him as a punishment. <laughs> I was only doing my duty, sir. Don't be so modest, young Henry. You showed not only courage, but loyalty to your liege. That's why I'm taking you into my personal service. <laughs> sir, I... Uh... <laughs> Thank you, sir. Well, let's celebrate your promotion and Sir Hans's recovery. Well, don't just stand there, lad. Pour us a drink. I'm sorry to interrupt, sir, but I've urgent tidings. What now? A stable boy came from Neuhof. He says brigands raided the stud farm this morning. There's many dead or maimed. Tell us exactly what happened. I'm not sure. The boy was so shook up he could barely speak. He said the bandits murdered for the joy of it. I'm sorry, sir. Your vassal Smill is dead. Who did this? Who were they? We don't know, sir. 
The stable boy just kept babbling about some huge fellow in black armor who led the attack. Take as many men as you need, and don't stop until you've found those bastards. And bring me their heads! Yes, sir. My men at your disposal too, Vinush. Thank you, friend. Sir, let me ride with them. He's full of piss and vinegar, isn't he? Their leader. He must be the one who attacked me at Scalitz. There can't be two men in the whole kingdom who look like that. You think he might still have my sword? No doubt you could use another swordsman, Captain. Uh, as you command, my lord. How soon can you leave, Bernard? Soon as the men are ready, sir. Good. Wait in the courtyard for Henry. And uh, give him a horse. His own mount? His reward for saving Sir Hans. He'll need it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well, go! I want these culprits in the hands of the executioner as soon as possible. I won't let you down, sir. Where's your master? In, in the paddock. <sighs> Crucifix. What kind of beasts could do this? By the blood of the martyrs. What happened here? Why? Someone came at night and hamstrung every one of them. The horses screaming must have woke poor Radek, the stable boy. And when he tried to stop them. And then my husband, when my husband tried to help them, they killed him too. And when they were done, they put a torch to the stables. My sincere condolences, ma'am. I swear we'll hunt those monsters down and make them pay for this. The horses were still alive when I came. We had to finish them off. All of them. The pain in their eyes. They couldn't understand how anyone could do this to them. Did they steal anything? Any horses? <laughs> Nothing. They wanted blood, not coin. Did your husband quarrel lately? Was there anyone who might want revenge? He argued over the price of a saddle, maybe, but nothing... Nothing that could drive a man to this. These are dark days when there's more kindness in horses than in men. Did you see anything? How many were there? Or what did they look like? We saw no one. Has anyone tried to follow their trail? No. We were fighting the blaze until now, and even if we weren't, what chance would any of us have against someone who could do this? A pox on it. Mount up and quarter the area. We have to find out where they went. Look for tracks and ask the folk if they saw anyone. Fuck, someone must have at least caught sight of them. Yes, yes sir. sir. What about me, Captain? What the hell use are you? You stay here. Please, let me do something. I could have a look around the area and see if they left any tracks. Well, if you must. Just don't get in anyone's way. Don't go too far and come back here when you're done.
Greetings. What business have you? My lord, I managed to find a clue to the whereabouts of the bandits. Excellent. Bernard already told me what's been happening, but I'd like to hear it straight from the horse's mouth. The whole story, or just the gist of it, sir? It's up to you what you consider important. One of the Neuhoff stable boys, a, a lad they call Ginger, fled from there and hid out with some charcoal burners. I have to say, there's a lot of them around. I never thought how many forges and ironworks they have to supply. That's true, but keep to the point. Oh, yes, sir. I had quite a job finding him. He was well hidden and with good reason. The bandits wanted to kill him because he recognised one of them. Did he tell you what happened? He said it wasn't one gang, but two. And one of them took fright when the slaughter started. Seems they were only interested in loot, so they quarrelled with the other lot. Then it came to a skirmish in the woods and one of them was killed. And the rest of them scattered. And did you find out where they went? All I know is one of them is from Ujits. I know enough about him to be able to track him down. All right, but those cutthroats must know who he is too, right? And if they want to get revenge on him or silence him, you'd better hope they don't get to him before you. So drop everything and get on his trail. Find out what he knows and then report back to me. I'm going to our encampment at Mahaya to oversee the security of the region. Yes, sir. Why choose Mahaya? It's somewhat at the centre of events, isn't it? And what's more, there's another stud farm there. Sir, do you think they're going to try the same thing again? I shouldn't think so. Everyone will be on the alert now, but the secluded dwellings are more vulnerable. There are few people in them. They're scattered everywhere and we can't guard them all. But the bandits won't find much silver in places like that. There's always a groschen or two, some food and so on. Anyway, how much silver did they get from slaughtering those horses? True. If they'd stolen them, they could have sold them. Those were fine animals. Exactly. It's not about the silver. It's about something else. But what? Creating fear. Such great terror that you won't even squeak when they come to cut your throat. Never mind raise your hand against them. Fear that will root you to the spot, staring like a rabbit entranced by a stoat, waiting for the death blow to fall. Helpless to do anything about it. citizens. Move along. There's nothing to see here. That's what you call nothing to see. I'd like to know what something to see looks like. I have keys to St. Peter. This is all I need. We'll have to send word to Sir Hanush. That might not be necessary. Who are you? I'm Henry of Scalitz, in the service of Hanush's Captain Bernard. I'm investigating the attack at Neuhof and I think this could be related. Well, I'm the bailiff of Auschwitz. And I say we don't want any of that kind of trouble around here. What makes you think this has anything to do with Neuhof? One of the folk at the stud farm recognized someone from Auschwitz among the bandits. We have no bandits or murderers around here. Really? They say he had a limp? Shit. Well, allow me to introduce you to Limpy Lubosch. Or all that's left of him. take a look around and ask a few more questions if that's all right with you you can take this mess off my hands and welcome to it as for what else there is to find out i don't know but look and ask all you like Christ, what am I to do? Not that I can expect any useful advice from you. At least, you have no more cares. 
Need someone to talk to? Fuck! No, don't kill me. I, I can explain. I won't tell anyone. I swear, I've no one to tell anyway. Just please don't kill me. I'm not planning to kill you. You're, you're not one of Runt's men? No. Huh. Then who are you? I come here in the name of Sir Radzik Kabila and Sir Hanish of Lypha. I'm investigating the raid on the Neuhof stud farm. I've got no idea what you're on about. Well, save your breath. If you want any chance to escape the gallows, you'd better come clean, all right? Jesus Christ. This will never be over. Hey, over here! people. We've got to get out of here. They're too close. We'll never outrun them. Fuck! At least they don't know I'm here. The two of us can take them by surprise. No fucking way. I'm gone. Look here. If you run, they'll catch up with you and kill you. And me too. Together, we stand a better chance. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right. I suppose you're right. Here I am. So, why all the secrecy? What do you want from Timmy? Can you tell me where to find him? Promise me nothing will happen to him. Why do you care so much? He's my brother. He's not very smart, you see. And he's always getting led astray by his no-good friends. And now there's some right peculiar characters looking for him. Who are they? I don't know. But they look like cutthroats. And they said some strange things. But I didn't tell them anything. That's good. But sooner or later they'll find him anyway. Tell me where he is and I'll take care of him. He's hiding at the Colburn farm over by Merhoyed. <laughs> feeling you're looking for someone here. I'm looking for someone too. Maybe we can help each other. I don't think so. No? Why not? Because I don't much like the look of you. You or your cronies. And I don't like you breathing on me. I don't like the way you stink. So fuck off. Well, well. Bold words for a whippersnapper like you. Come on then. Let's see what you're made of. But here. Hey, te, I'll check it. Kitchen, we talk about Sulian and Mami's cooking. Who joins Nom Kel? Ezt csinálhatod, ahol akarod. Úgy is térdig járunk a szarba. Radzik! I'm glad to see you, Captain Robart. I hope Henry's explained everything to you. He did. But I find it hard to believe. Who could possibly put together such a significant military force? And right under our noses. We'll just have to find out. But I don't think we will until after a battle. If we don't deal with them now, who knows what they'll be capable of in a week or two. I agree entirely, my lord. What's the plan? Right, lad. We're almost at the place you described. Now we'll have to advance cautiously. I need you to tell me how it looks around the camp so I can decide which side to lead the attack from. Sir, that's a big responsibility. I don't think I should... I asked you a question, boy. You've been there and seen everything, so speak up. There are three ways to get in. Directly along the straight path to the camp, the long way round through the woods and over an old weir, or by a narrow bridge over a deep ditch. Let's start with the direct route. That sounds like the easiest approach. How does it look there? That path leads round their battlements. It's fortified and patrolled. The chances are they'd shower us with arrows on the way. It's a good thing you're here, Henry. We'll have to try another way then. What about the approach through the woods and the weir? I don't like the idea of marching such a long way over rough ground, but if it's the better option. 
It's a long way through the woods, and there are patrols there as well. They'll call the alarm before we reach the camp. I thought so. What about the last approach, over the bridge? It's a bit narrow for my liking. It's narrow, all right, but once we get over, we can quickly occupy the best ground for a battle. We only have to take down a few archers. The battleground sounds inviting, but that bridge in the archers, it's not an easy decision. Each option has its pros and cons. Well, I try to answer to the best of my ability, sir. And you'll be suitably rewarded for your efforts. From what you say, the route over the bridge is the best option. If we're fast, we'll have the advantage. With the help of God, we'll win this day. Remember me? I remember you, though. Now where's my fucking sword? What the fuck are you on about? What's? Hang on. You're the. Fuck me. I thought we left you to the crows. Tough little fucker, eh? What did you do with my sword? Judging by our last. I'd say you made a big mistake coming here. Where's my fucking sword? But then again, maybe you've had some practice. I hope so. Because last time was too easy. My sword. What have you done with it? <laughs> Talk, you bastard! I'd say you're flogging a dead horse there. You took him down. On your own. Well done. Nice work. You surprised me. He was a mountain of a man. He was the one who attacked Noyov. And stole your sword, sir. The thought did cross my mind. What did he tell you? taken him alive, the executioner might have gotten more out of him. Oh well, these things happen in the heat of battle. Anyway, we found a trunk full of coin down below. Someone was paying this gang very well. There were some of Sigismund's barbarians among them. I don't think we've seen the last of this. Whoever engineered it was highly placed. They won't give up after one defeat. This louse was just a pawn. I'm afraid you're right, sir. Well, lad, we live to fight another day, eh? <laughs> 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 
That's the fear leaving you, lad. Let it go. Now, put it all behind you. A decent Christian shouldn't dwell on such horrors. I beg to differ, sir. I never want to forget this. The time has come for those whore sons to pay for what they did to us. You're right, my boy. But first, we all need some rest. We'll meet later in the upper castle in Rathe, and then decide what to do next. But come what may, you did a good job today. Time for the next part of our plan. Give the word. Yes, sir. My lord, I'm afraid you were right when you said these hostilities wouldn't end at Probislavitz. That comes as no surprise. What has happened? The men reported two more attacks today. <coughs> ah, Henry. I'm glad you're here. It seems like we'll have another task for you. Come and join us. My lords. Greetings, lad. The bandits raided a few remote hamlets, but that's the least of our worries. They also attacked Merhoyed, and that's a much more serious matter. Merhoyed? Matthias is working there. They attacked right after the battle in Provislavitz. Bastards are probably trying to prove they're still strong. But there's a silver lining. The villagers held them off even took one captive. He's wounded, and we can still interrogate him. Your graces. I hope I'm not intruding. On the contrary, Master Tobias. Unlike Bernard, you are the bearer of good tidings. Or so I gather from the coin you carry. Tell me, how many Groshen did we find in Pribislavitz? My lord, I'm sorry, but my news is no better than Captain Bernard's. These coins are very good. That is to say, well-made facsimiles, as we call them. Uh, fac what? I don't give a fac what you call them. I want to know what they're facking worth. That's just it, sir. They're worth nothing. Are you saying what I think you're saying, Master Tobias? Um, this here is just a pile of copper. Kura! Fuck! Plated with silver, so it's still of some... <laughs> Worth. Hmm. Kurva! Fuck! Is it a lot of work to make such counterfeits, Master Tobias? I should say so, sir. Highly demanding work. Especially to make such plausible forgeries. They would need a well hidden foundry, several craftsmen, and a source of material. But they could just be brought in from somewhere else, could they not? Well, they could, but then again, the silver mines are nearby, and these groshans seem freshly minted, so... So we are Fuck. facing a foe who has almost limitless sources of coin. That's all we need. Dop the devil. Well, gentlemen, it's clear what we have to do. Interrogate that captive bandit, find out their numbers, and promptly cut off their supply of money. Otherwise, they'll soon have another encampment. If they haven't already... I doubt it, sir. Merhayed wouldn't have been able to hold them off if they did. Well, lad, I said that we'd have work for you, but it never crossed my mind there would be this much. You've already proved your worth as an investigator, so I'm putting my faith in you again. Go to Merhayed and question that captive. Find out where those brigands are hiding, how many there are, and what they're planning. And while you're at it, see if you can find some clues as to where this counterfeit coin is coming from. Very well, sir. Good luck. We're counting on you, all of us. Come report to me as soon as you know anything. I'll be at the lookout point near Talmberg. Are you Melikar? Aye, that's me. I need to speak with the prisoner. And why is that? Who might you be? Henry, envoy of Saradze Kobola. I'm here to investigate the attack. I'm sorry. I have other things on my mind right now. In case you hadn't noticed, we have pestilence raging here. 
And Sir Adzig won't help us with that any more than he helped us when we were attacked. No news has reached Ratai of any disease here. But I'm here now, and I can help you. Mm. Well, since you serve Sir Adzig, you might be of some use. If anyone can be. Tell me what to do. There's a stable hand living with us here, Matthias. Yes, I know him. And he knows some girl who helps out in the monastery infirmary. Your hanker, I think her name is. She might know someone to turn to, if she's actually there. God be with you, lad. What can I do for you? I've returned from Mefoyed, sir. How does it look, then? I brought them help from the monastery. Brother Nicodemus and Yahanka from Skalit. Fortunately, Nicodemus was able to cure the disease. Well, at least what he's doing looked promising so far. Thank Christ. Some good news for a change. What about the captive? Did you question him? He was infected, too. I see. Did he survive? Fortunately, he survived, and I had a chance to question him. What did you find out? He was transporting the false coins to Pribislavitz. He got them from some merchant called Menhart. I don't know him. Neither do I. But I know where the money's handed over. It's not far from Rovna, and this Menhart should be waiting there about now. Excellent, Henry. We mustn't let this opportunity slip through our fingers. You go there and put pressure on this Menhart to tell us what he knows. Don't go yet. There's something I'd like to talk to you about. God be with you. You haven't disappointed me. Nothing against Bernard, Robard, or any of those others. But none of them could find out as much as you. At least not without beatings and torture. And that doesn't always work. You're a godsend, lad. Thank you, sir. Now go and find out who's behind everything, and then we'll deal with them. Yes, sir. Sir. What is it? Sometimes I ask myself what, what it all means. Why does God allow such things to happen? All this slaughter and revenge, over and over. It's a hard question. I'm no theologian. But long ago I came to the conclusion that the only thing that makes sense is that it's all a trial. Life is one long series of problems to solve. The more you solve, the better a man you become. I never thought about it that way. Well, just look at the pampered ones who have no concerns in life, like young Lord Capon, for instance. I shudder to think how he will rule when his time comes. True relations spawn in life over and over again. We must stand our ground and face them. So, I go to Sasso and solve this one. Hmm? You can rely on me, sir. Good luck, son. Are you? Do as I say, and you might walk out of here alive. What? What's that? What do you mean? Don't worry about it. Just answer my questions, and I might even help you. Well, if you say so. Who is it you work for? Who did the wagon belong to? To Menhart. He's some kind of merchant who hired me for protection. But that's all I know. Hmm. And where's this Menhart disappeared off to? No idea. I blacked out after the attack. Only came to my senses once I got here. I don't even know where here is. Who ambushed that wagon? A knight. He's been following us for a while. And where did he go? I don't know. I got a beating, and then I passed out. Tell me more about the knight. Where's the coin? What? What coin? I will not repeat the question. I, I don't know about any coin. I swear. Gah! Where are oh. those sacks you took from the wagon? Sacks? They're behind the shed. That's him. That's got to be that knight. Is that all? Did you take anything else? Uh-uh. Oh. Fuck! Stop! Stop right there! 
Well. <coughs> Who is that, Teufel? It seems I have finally met my match. I want to know everything. Who you are, why you're here, and what you know about the ambushed wagon. You may call me Ulrich. I will tell you nothing more until you give me some assurances. Assurances? How about this? If you talk, I'll spare you. Do you expect me to believe that? I know full well how these stories end. I... I have been at the other end of the sword more times than you can count. I give you my word. <laughs> the word of a thief? Jesus. It is true what the preachers say. This world has gone quite mad. You had better kill me. I'm finished, anyway. Just as you are. Unlike you, I'm not a criminal. You believe that the forging of money is an honest trade? I've got nothing to do with that. I'm not a forger, I'm the one investigating them. What? What are you saying? I'm in the service of Sir Radzig Kobola, Governor of Scalitz and Royal Hetman. Then we have something in common. I also am here under orders from above. From who? Perhaps you might sheet that weapon so that we may talk eye to eye, if we do indeed have a common cause. Stand up. It is true our meeting has not begun well, but if it is the truth that you are sent by Kobila, then we can assist each other. What do you mean? I found out many things, but there are still questions I cannot answer. And the last man who knew anything is now dead. What man was that? Mainhardt, the merchant from Passau. Listen, I will explain everything to you. But first, I need you to do something for me. Oh, really? You will introduce me to a certain person, and I will tell you everything I've learned. I don't think I could honestly recommend you as a suitor to any of the ladies I know. <laughs> your wit is as piercing as your blade. Fine, who is it? Master Tobias Pfeiffer. If you truly serve Sir Radzik, then you must know him. I think I know who you mean. What do you want him for? I have here a written confession which tells how those forgeries are made. But I do not understand such technical matters. Master Pfeiffer, however... We'll definitely be able to make sense of it. And you'll give it to me, just like that. It seems I have little choice. This is the last lead I have. In the meantime, I will return to Sasso and see what I might learn there. Shouldn't you go with me to see Pfeiffer? No. I must remain in Sasso. I have some uh, loose ends that must be tied. Who are you working for? I understand why you wish to know, but this does not mean I am at liberty to tell you. That sounds a bit fishy. It is simply that my master does not wish to be revealed. And if we are to help one another, that is how it must remain. Greetings. What business have you? Master Feyfar, I need to speak with you. I found out something about the counterfeit coin. Did you really? Do tell. Close to Rovna, I came across a wagon that was transporting the false coins. Unfortunately, I came too late. The carter and his men were dead. Damn and blast. Do you know who did it? Yes. A certain knight turned up there. Turned out he was also after the forgers. Well, that is indeed unexpected. Tell me, what did he say? His name is Ulrich. He looked like a knight, but he refused to show his master's colours. Ulrich, you say? Hmm. Could be anyone. Can you describe him? An older man with a moustache. But for all his grey hairs, he seemed pretty tough to me. Hmm. Doesn't match anyone I've heard of. But then we don't even know if Ulrich is his real name. I asked him who his liege was, but he refused to tell me. We live in such strange times. In days past, knights would vie with each other to see who could extol their lieges' name the loudest. And today, they take assumed names, hide their emblems, and sneak around the land like thieves. I got the impression he was hiding his identity because his masters are odds with Sir Radzik. That may well be. As a staunch supporter of the king, Sir Radzik has many enemies. He gave me these documents to show you. He seemed to think they prove he was telling the truth. 
They had the records of the interrogations in Passau and some other things he said you'd understand better than him. Hmm. Let me see. We, the aldermen of the city of Passau, mm -hmm. interrogation held this day, mm -hmm. put to pain by the quester. The place of origin is a monastery in the land of Bohemia. Hmm. Which certainly confirms my suspicion that something underhand is going on in Sasso. Coin assay report. Copper core coated with amalgam. Ah, well this is interesting. Here's an outlying description of how the forgeries are made. I'll have to study it more closely. We command Herr Ulrich mm -hmm. to investigate and let no man stand in his way. This looks like the original safe conduct. It has the seal of the Passau alderman. But they certainly didn't pen this. How do you know? I recognise the hand. It's a Clement of Kaplitz, the high scribe of the Rosenbergs. The Rosenbergs? Who's that? A rich and powerful family in South Bohemia. Burgrave Henry III is a great rival of our King Wenceslas. So what does all this mean? Well, it certainly explains why your knight is so mysterious. Anyway... We should be careful, and we shall begin our investigation. The documents show they use silver amalgam for coating copper fakes. That's a lead we can follow. Amal what? Silver amalgam. It's produced from quicksilver in silver. Well, that doesn't sound like something just anyone can get hold of. Hmm, you're quite right. You will go to Sasso at once. Look around the forges in the city. Someone must be working copper for them. I, meanwhile, will take counsel with Sir Radzik and then follow after you. Where shall we meet? At the inn on Sasso Market Square. Jesus Christ, who are you and what are you doing here? I'm here at the command of the Royal Hetman, Sir Radzig Kabila. And who's he? That's no concern of yours. I'm sure we could come to some sort of agreement. Uh, I have plenty of coin. <laughs> we can come to an agreement that you'll keep your mouth shut. Oh. Oh. Please, don't take this personally. Wait! What? Do you want to do it? Be my guest. It gives me no pleasure. You can't kill him. I have orders to take him to Ratai. That is unfortunate. I have orders to kill everyone involved in this business. You can't do that. I have no choice, as you are aware. Yeah. Let's go. Master Faithfar is very keen to meet you. Good work, Henry. Thank you, Master Fayfar. It wasn't easy, I can tell you. I'll take some men and have a good look around there. And what should I do? You should get some rest and go to Rate. In the meantime, Sir Radzig will have this wretch questioned. Maybe he'll get something useful out of him. All right. I'll see you in Rate then. Amen. So, you've been looking for us, eh? What is it you want? I hear you're hiring men who don't mind getting their hands dirty. Is that so? From where did you hear that? Taverns and the like. People talk. Well, that's a pretty tale. But no one in any tavern told you to come here and wait, did they? So let's have it. Who told you? I don't recall his name, but he was one of your friends. He said that he couldn't take me straight to you, that I had to go through the church. He was right about that. But he still said more than he should have. I know my way around. You won't go wrong with me. Spare me the boasting. I've got a test ready for you. Let's see how you handle it before you tell us how wonderful you are. What test? Nothing complicated. We used to take anyone who looked like they could keep their head on straight, but not now. Now you can only join if you do what we tell you. Which is what? Steal something? Nah, not theft. 
If you want to join us, you have to kill Pius. Who's Pius? And why should I kill him? That's none of your business. But I'll tell you anyway, because it's an instructive tale. Pius was one of us, but he fucked up. How? Did he steal something? Yeah, that was part of it. Stole some money, ran away. A few boys died over it. Showed a distinct lack of loyalty. And as soon as he's dead, you can join us. I'll have to find him first. <laughs> you don't need to find him. We know where he is. Then why haven't you killed him yourselves? It's quite a test. He's hiding in a monastery. The Lord be praised. What brings you to me? Sir, this investigation into the Neuhof massacre... It's getting a bit complicated. What have you found out? I tracked down a gang of robbers who recruited killers for Privislavitz. They know the Horsons who torch Neuhof. That's excellent news. Did you find out any more? So far, not much. If I'm going to infiltrate them, I have to do what they say. That means murdering one of their former cronies, a fellow they call Pius. Apparently he was at Neuhof too. You have to kill a criminal to prove yourself to them? Huh. I don't much like the sound of it. That's not the worst of it. This Pius is hiding out in the monastery pretending to be a novice. I'd have to get inside the cloisters to get at him. <laughs> Good God above, that's another matter entirely. They don't let just anyone into the cloisters, and the abbot won't give up any of the novices. Secular law has no jurisdiction inside the monastery. But this is the second time that something untoward has happened there. First the counterfeiters, now this. I'd be glad to have someone take a look inside. It seems like the only way to find Pius is to join the Order. Damned if I know how, though. A bit of meditation and learning would do you good. If it's really the only way to get to him, then you'll have to do it. I'm sorry I can't be of much help. Sadly, my relations with the monastery aren't entirely congenial. You'll have to figure something out for yourself. What should I do with Pius once I find him? Don't kill him. Bring him to the bailiff in Rate. He'll interrogate the man and give him a fair trial. It doesn't sound like an easy task, sir. Getting into the cloisters, finding Pius, and then getting him to the bailiff. Far from it, lad. But I have confidence in your abilities. I'm Carl. I'm supposed to enter as a novice. We expected you sooner. Weren't you supposed to come here with your guardian? It's been so hectic lately, people will keep turning up out of the blue. He gave me the papers and left me at the gate. You must be used to that, though. I'm not the first novice here, am I? But that wasn't very considerate of him, was it? It's been so hectic here lately, novices arriving one after the other. The last one didn't even have a letter, and you'd think his backside was on fire. The way he kept looking over his shoulder. You took him without the letter? You didn't find that suspicious? My guess is he wanted to hide from someone. But he's a priest and knows how things work in the monastery. So there was nothing to prevent him from being accepted. At least, temporarily. You're a different case, though. Are you able to read? Naturally. I wouldn't be here otherwise. So then, are you ready to enter the Order of St. Benedict and renounce forever the temptations of this world? I am. Then you must rid yourself of all your worldly possessions. Sell them or give them to the poor and needy or donate them to the monastery. You may not enter this place burdened by worldly goods. Inside the gatehouse is a trunk in which you will find monk's robes. Put away all your possessions and dress yourself in the habit. Then you may rest a while, while I go and see the prior to arrange matters for your acceptance. Everything's prepared. It's time for you to take your vows. Do I really have to wear this? You'd better get used to it. You'll be wearing it for the rest of your life.
brothers in Christ, we have gathered here today to welcome a new novice into our midst. Dear brother, forget your former life and embrace your new vocation in the community of the monks of St. Benedict. Opus Dei, obedientia, obprobria, the service of God, obedience, and endurance of all discomfort. These are the cornerstones and succor of our order, which on this day shall become your own. Sustipe me, Domine, secundum eloquium tuum et vivam. Et non confundas me, ab expectatione me. Suscipe me, Domine, secundum, in loquium tuum vivam, et, et non confundas me, ab expectatione, Accept your new name, Brother Gregor, and wear it with honor. Welcome, brother. Morning, sunshine. Hope we didn't wake you. Kurva. Did you have to sneak up on me like thieves? We are thieves. Besides, we had to make sure you weren't followed. Or trying to lead us into a trap. But enough of this chit chat. Let's get down to business. We heard there was some trouble at the monastery. Question is, was it the right sort? Did you do that job we agreed? Do you think I'd be sitting here if I didn't do it? How should I know? The world's full of idiots. It's done. You've got proof? He had this on him. Hmm. Aye. That says all right. What did you do with the body? I dragged it away and buried it. That must have been quite a job. True, it wasn't easy. But if I'd left the corpse, they'd know for sure I was the killer. This way, they just lost a couple of novices. Or do you think it would have been better to leave the body there? No. I just have to make sure you did what was needed. Not even a mouse can get into that damn monastery. So no choice but to trust you. And do you trust me? Yeah. What now? What now? You did your job. Welcome. We need people like you. But what do you need people like me to do? <laughs> I'm just a crimp. 
All I do is recruit. Now you get to go to our camp and find out everything you need to know. Where? Are you seriously telling me you didn't notice the camp? Not too observant, are you? Well, there's a hill above Sasau, and on top, there's an old abandoned fort. Only it's not as abandoned as it used to be. That's where the camp is. Go there and report to a fellow by the name of Eric. Tell him Kozliak sent you. And they'll let me in just like that? Good point. I almost forgot. At the gate, show them the special die you took off Pius. That's our sign. That's all? That's all. You'll learn everything you need to know at Vranik. And hurry up. I've got a feeling there's something being planned. Sir, I have news, and I'm sorry to say it's nothing good. After everything that's happened, you have even worse news. That's almost impressive. I'm afraid so. It's going to happen again, and on an even bigger scale. You're full of good cheer, aren't you? What exactly will happen? It seems the Pribislavitz encampment was just the start, and they're far from defeated. How did you find out? I found a recruiting agent who works for them, and let him recruit me. Ah! God's holy hat! You never cease to surprise me, lad. And what did you find out? They have another much bigger encampment in Vranik near to Sasau. What do those bastards want? And who the hell are they? To hurt us? Conquer the region? I'm not sure yet, but I can find out. How? I'm one of them now. I have their secret sign. I know where their camp is. All I have to do is go and take a look. That's out of the question. It's too risky. Sire, compared to everything I went through to get this, it will be child's play. I already passed their test. They trust me. Then we'll have to attack them before things get out of hand. Ideally, right now, when they're not expecting us. Once we catch that mangy little shit, we can ask him nicely what he wants. But then again, before we attack, it would be useful to have a spy go and scout out how many of them there are and what they're up to. I don't want you to take any unnecessary risks. It's much less risky than our raid on Pribis Lavitz. All right then, Hal. Go there and find out how many of them there are, and what their plans are, whatever you can. But don't stick your neck out too far. Yes, sir. Godspeed, lad. What do you want? Let me inside. Inside, eh? What's the password, then? I came here for a game. Show me that. Aye. All right. Welcome to Vranik, comrade. Thank you for your kind welcome, comrade. Who should I report to? Eric. He should be in the house, at the top. What do you want? Kozlik sent me. Ah, more reinforcements. You're the one from the monastery? Yes, sir. So you really killed that turncoat? Yes, sir. Well done. I heard about you. And quite honestly, I didn't think you'd succeed. So can you handle a sword? Yes, I know what I'm doing. Well, I think it's best if we put you to the test. Go to our combat master, Vanyek. He'll soon find out what you're made of. Just go downhill, as far as the stockade. His tent is right next to the training arena. All right, sir. Are you combat master Vanyek? <laughs> Aye, that's me. What do you want? I'm Henry. Eric said you'd try me out to see how good I am with a sword. Ah, another greenhorn. Nice to see Koslik's doing his job. Mind you, most of the peasants he sends me couldn't fight a pile of manure with a pitchfork. Hey, don't I know you from somewhere? You look familiar. Yes, you taught me sword fighting in Scalis. Wait now. Yes, I do remember. We met at the alehouse. Well, I'm glad you made it out alive. I took to my heels before it even started. All right, let's see what you're good for. Have you got a weapon? If not, you can borrow one over there. Now, are you ready? Ready as I'll ever be. All right, let's see what you're made of. <sighs> Jesus, you've got me. You're a lot better than most of the fuckers here, lad. Well done. I've had a bit of practice. So I see. I'll tell Eric what you've got in you, don't worry about that. But so you don't think old Vanyek has passed it, I'll teach you one trick you'll be glad to know. Oh, that's very generous of you. Well, I don't want to take it to the grave with me. All right, listen. 
Before you start twisting and turning, take a good firm stance with your legs wide apart, like this. As if you're about to let off a huge fart. I think I've got it. Thanks. Sir, may I... What is it? I went to the fight master as you ordered, and I... What's the matter? Lost your tongue? I think I know what's troubling the young master. He's surprised to see me here. And the feeling's mutual. When did you start recruiting Radzik's people, Eric? Radzik? Indeed. This boy is very dear to him. And I expect he's looking for this? Am I right, young man? You bastard. <laughs> coming round. I apologize for the discomfort, but it's for your own safety. And ours, of course. You can count yourself lucky, lad. I'm going to keep you alive. I'm sure your father will pay a nice fat ransom for you. My father's dead. That lucky of yours wouldn't even let me bury him. He doesn't know, Eric. Nobody told him. They told me, a foreigner, but not him. How very inconsiderate. I'm sure you'd rather hear it under different circumstances and from someone else, boy. But beggars can't be choosers. Your father, your real father, is alive. You even know him. It's your liege lord, Radzik Kobela. Although, how much can he really care about you? Here you are homeless orphan, and he still hasn't acknowledged you. Your parents are both dead, aren't they? I thought so. And yet, Radzig still hasn't told you the truth. Could it be that he's ashamed of you? Hmm. I wonder if you'll want to pay that ransom after all. Well, best not think about that. If your father won't pay your ransom, you have no value to me. My father's dead. I understand why you feel that way. My own childhood was not dissimilar. How strange that we should have something in common. But I've delayed long enough. Now it's time for you to tell me why you came here. I was looking for my father's sword which was stolen by a certain bastard. And I found it. But I wonder which father you mean. In a way, it belongs to both. Doesn't matter who it belongs to. I'm gonna kill you with it. You're hardly in a position to threaten me. But now I think of it, why not? When your father, your real father, pays, I'll give you an opportunity to try. I think that's very generous of you. Isn't it? <laughs> Radzik will crush you. And I'll be there to see it. I very much doubt it. You spied at our camp. You must realize that your father hasn't a fraction of the forces I've gathered. And now, with the king in captivity, there's no one to levy troops to come to your aid. <laughs> Even united with Hanush and Divish, your father couldn't raise more men than I have. The only force in this country capable of defeating me is Sigismund's. And he pays me. <laughs> when he wins, I win. Everything I take now will be mine. And I plan to take everything. So meet the new lord of the realm. A man like you will never rule here. Ah. Have you never heard of Lord Sokol of Lamberg or Sir Hinek, the Dry Devil? They fought for your king and plundered the estates of the lords in Austria, just as I'm doing here. Like they say, the stronger dog fucks the bitches. Ugh. And war is a nasty business. Sir, it's time. Now, I'm afraid I have more important business to attend to. I'll leave Udo here to keep you company. <laughs> and let's hope for both our sakes that your father pays up. Farewell. Rot in hell! Knock some manners into him, Udo. Come on, Eric, let's go. We've got work to do.
Wake up. Can you hear me? Jesus, that book really works. You over. Here. Try to drink. I thought you'd never come round. How do you know my name? Don't you recognize me? It's Bishek. You fucking traitor. You throw me to those bastards and then look me in the eye like nothing shh, happened. Shh, quiet. Maybe we started off on the wrong foot. But I'm your only chance to get out of here alive. So do you want my help or not? Any word about your boy, Radzik? Nothing yet. Well, let's hope he hasn't done anything rash. Wouldn't surprise me, given the balls that he has. Now, I wonder where he might have got those from. Don't start, Hanush. I'm sorry, sir. This fellow... Henry. Father? Ha, <laughs> ha. I told you he had balls. Well, I see that you haven't been idle, and we'll certainly need to have a talk later, but not quite so publicly. It looks like you have plenty to tell us. What happened? I, uh... I got a bit tied up at Vranik. But now I know what they're planning. What's for your plan? And who's planning it? Spit it out, boy! There's no longer any doubt about it. It's that Hungarian noble you were hosting on the same day Sigismund pillaged Skalitz. Sir Istvan Toth. Toth and his people. Everything fits. They're the ones making the counterfeit money and using it to hire mercenaries from all around. He's already got quite an army at Vranjik. But what the fuck is he after? I can tell you exactly. And you won't like it. How's that? I had quite a long talk with him. What? When I was trying to get into his camp, I was taken captive. We had a bit of a chat. Actually, he told me his entire plan. What? I suppose he thought he didn't need to keep it secret any longer. I'm not all that surprised. Why not? What's that bastard planning? He's in the service of Sigismund. He wants to destroy King Wenceslas' allies. That means us. He's gathered a very large force. I'm honestly not sure if we can defeat them. And he knows no one will come to our aid now. That fucking cunt! I'll skin him alive! How many men has he got? More than a hundred, I'd say. And how secure is their camp? It's an old abandoned fortress on a hill above Sassau. It's inaccessible from three sides, surrounded by a timber palisade. Bastard! I'll crush that rabble of his! That's easy to say, old friend. It seems Toth isn't taking any chances. Together with Dibish, we can muster enough men. And we can all see there's no time to waste. That bastard wants a battle? Much better we pick a time and place than he does. Undoubtedly. We have to take them by surprise. It would be best to attack tomorrow night. We can't get ready any sooner. <laughs> That's what I like to hear, Radzig. Henry, I want you to get yourself fixed up and then go straight to Sir Dibish of Tamburg. Tell him to assemble all the able-bodied men he can and bring them to Vranik tomorrow evening. We'll wait for him there. Yes, sir. Finally, a chance to show I'm not carrying a sword just for ornament. What is it, Henry? Is there something else? The thing is, we have to deal with Zvishek. I see. And who is he? Zvishek is from Skalitz. He helped me escape captivity and saved my life. I promised him a reward for it. Indeed. 
Well, Spishek, if you saved my son's life, I'm grateful to you. As a token of my gratitude, please accept this reward. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your generosity. And under the circumstances, we won't ask how you came to be with that herd of swine at Vranik. So you'd better get out of here quick before I start thinking about it. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Goodbye, my lords. Thanks, Henry. God be with you. Get a good meal inside you and get those wounds tended to. You look wretched. And if you need equipment or armor, tell Bernard. He'll give you what you need. Yes, my lord. No more, my lord. I'm your father. I swear, Hal, I plan to tell you. I'm sorry, Ishvan, of all people, beat me to it. But now we have more urgent matters to deal with. Hmm? Later, we'll have time to talk about it. What do you say? As you wish, my lord. Father. Good. Now go to Divish as quickly as you can, son. Sir, I bring an urgent message from my father, from Sir Radzig and Hanish. <laughs> I take it you've heard. What does your father want from me? I found out who's behind all the unrest in the region, and father and Hanish have decided to put an end to it all. What? So who is responsible for all our recent troubles? You may have met him, Istvan Toth. No, I haven't met him. But Sir Radzik said he'd been here to visit before... before the raid. I don't suppose that's a coincidence. What kind of man is he? What is he after? He's in the service of King Sigismund, and he's fighting the nobility who support King Wenceslas. They've amassed quite a force at the old stronghold above Sassau, and they're planning to attack very soon. Father and Hannah should decided to move first and destroy him before he's prepared. Oh. For Christ's sake. When and how? Tonight. They send word for you to muster your men and rendezvous with them at Vranik. This is madness. Maybe it is. But I fear that Radzik and Hanish are right. The sooner we cure this pestilence, the better. Gather the men and make ready. We march tonight. Leave only as many as you must to guard the castle. Very well, sir. As you command. Will you be coming with us? Yes, sir. I have some scores to settle with them. miss the show. You didn't expect me to leave all the glory to you. Never. We wouldn't dream of starting without you. What news? Did you parley with them? <laughs> we did. And what was the outcome? <laughs> Not quite what we hoped for. Radzig wanted to go parley with them in person. Fortunately, I talked him out of it. <laughs> it seems that this will not be resolved without a battle. Bloody good thing, too. Finally, we'll have some proper entertainment in the countryside. Fortunately, my son here showed immense daring and made his way into the lion's den to spy on them. Tell us what you saw, lad. 
What do you want to know, exactly? Well, let's start with how well fortified they are. The outer palisade goes right around the whole camp. On a small hill inside it, there's a half-demolished farmhouse that's ringed by another palisade. That's where I was held prisoner. And that's where Toff's based. Him and his inner circle. Can you tell us how many tents there are and how they're arranged? There might be fifty, maybe three score. Most of them in the right-hand side of the camp. And the men? How many men strong are they? Quite a few. At least eighty. Huh. We don't number much more than that ourselves. We do outnumber them, though, even if only by a few men. A and our men are well-armed and disciplined. The foe, nothing but a rabble. From what I've seen, it's best to attack from our direction. How does it look from the other side? The east side is all rocks, so no hope of launching a major assault from there. On the other hand, that's the way I escaped. It's where they throw all their waste. The heap's already so high, it's almost to the top of the palisade. Now that is interesting. The ramparts are long. If there are as many of them as we think, they can hardly keep watch over the entire length. Attack with full force at the gate, and they won't have enough men at the rear. That's an excellent strategy. But then I'd expect no less from you. If we cause an enormous uproar at the same time, they won't know what's hit them. Uproar? You said they have tents there? Yes, sir. Well, if I'm not mistaken, tents usually burn rather well. And we have quite a few archers. <laughs> you don't do things by halves, Divish. So, I believe we have a plan. Robard will take ten men and sneak to the rear of the fortifications. There's an entry point, but you must remain hidden. I will do my best, sir. That shouldn't be too hard. They'll have other things to worry about. The rest of us will launch a frontal assault. Rain burning arrows on them and then attack. Those bastards won't know which way to turn. At that point, Robot and his squad will strike from the rear. I think it's a good plan. God be with you, my friends. We'll wipe those whore sons off the face of the earth. Listen up now. We are about to meet the rabble that have been trying to hurt us. Pillaging, killing, raping, and generally being a thorn in our side for long enough. They may be hiding behind a stockade, but they are still a pack of curs who are no match for men like you. And tonight, we are going to festoon these trees with corpses. First, we will set fire to their little hornet's nest. Then we'll keep them busy by the gate. And when we've made it nice and hot for them, Sir Robard and his men will pounce on them from the rear. And we will hack them to pieces. Have you got it? Yes, sir. Good. Now, when we reach the ramparts, the archers will cover the men climbing it and the men with the battering ram. Any of these fuckers foolish enough to stick his head outside the stockade is to lose it at once. Understood? Yes, sir! Glad to hear it. Now, let's do it. Forward! Where's that Hungarian bastard? Why isn't he here? Don't tell me no one was in command. It does rather look that way, Hanush. Henry, where's Top? You said he was here. He definitely was, sir. I've got the cuts and bruises to show for it. You have to find out where he slithered off to. Look for clues. Anything that will tell us what he's doing. Sir, this was all I could find. A letter? What does it say, Ratzig? Alongside hunting, drinking and swordplay, you might find time for a little study, old man. In the courts of Prague, every Tom, Dick and Harry can read nowadays. Yes, well, here in the countryside, we don't give a tinker's curse about such things. Huh. That's what I've got a scribe for, anyway. 
What does the damn thing say? It appears to be written by Toth, but it doesn't say to whom. It says everything is going according to plan, and the castle should soon be taken. Castle? What castle? What does he need a castle for? Sir, we took this one alive. And it seems he's not just some ordinary spear carrier. Where's that rat Toth? Where did he go? Speak, damn you! <sighs> he's thwarted you again, hasn't he? <laughs> If you play your cards right, you might come out of this in one piece. Where is your lord? He was here yesterday, wasn't he? Come now, sir. We both know where I will end up. <laughs> My lord is gone. He took most of the men and left. Where is he gone? What is he planning? He writes here about taking some castle. Which castle? <laughs> oh, some nearby castle. Left completely unguarded. Now I wonder where it could be. <laughs> what are you saying, you horse son? Talmberg. Did he go to Talmberg? <laughs> You'll never get him. You'll never get. We're planning on sending him to some monastery to become a monk. I believe we have some work to do, Sir Dibbish, do we not? Mount up, gentlemen. We don't have any time to waste. Greetings. We... we were ambushed. We need assistance. We have wounded men here. Open the gate. The Lord be praised. Here! Come on! Lady Stephanie, I, I really don't think we should... My lady. Master man! Come on, master! My men are gravely wounded. Without treatment, I'm afraid they won't live to see morning. Not to worry. We'll take care of them. My lady, you have my uttermost gratitude. May God reward you for your kindness. Every Christian should help his neighbor in his hour of need. True. Especially now, when treachery and deception surround us on all sides. Get out of the way! The devil lurks in the shadows. Come on! And one fears taking a guest into his house.
out, you rat! Come out and fight like a man! <laughs> I don't think so. I like it better right here. Would you rather hide behind my wife like some mangy whelp? I could just as easily cut her throat! I have hostages enough. And strong walls to protect me. Bring him here! Radzig? What do you want, you viper? <laughs> Let me think. Hmm. Actually, there's nothing I want from you. Except maybe to see you all die. Fire! Burn it down! Christ. Uh, are you all right? Uh, I'll live. Oh. Whew. But I don't think I'll be wielding a sword for a while. Oh, we have men enough for sword wielding. A good lord is harder to come by. How the hell did they get Radzik? I didn't make it to the gate. He was charging against reinforcements from the castle. We have to save Sir Rab my father, somehow. And we have to save my wife and get our home back. My friend, I think you know as well as I, we have to lay siege. No, no, that is our last resort. We have to try all our other options. Sir, if a few men could scale the Western Wall after dark, maybe they could get inside, free the hostages, and open the gate. That is, if they're holding them in the courtyard, as we've always done. That's a big if. What if they're seen and they can't raise the portcullis quietly? Sir Hanish, if we can save just one hostage. It's a perilous undertaking. Who would you send? I'll go. Then let us make ready. Any of you are having second thoughts. This is your last chance to speak. Very well. So I hope we're all clear on what has to be done. We need to free the hostages to deprive Toth of his advantage. Now he'll be keeping them somewhere where they can be guarded, but somewhere separate from his other men. And where would that be? We always kept our captives in the house on the bailey by the stables. What if they're in their tower or somewhere else? Then we'll have to go to the gate and try to open it. But that will take time and attract attention. So we can only do it if we know exactly how things stand. And if they sound the alarm, before we've done anything, we get out of there quick. Understood? And leave them there? Better a couple of hostages than a pile of corpses. Lord Capon, are you quite certain you want to engage in this action? Quite. After all, it can't be much different from sneaking out of the upper castle in Rate and back in every night. <laughs> Besides, who else will keep this hothead from raising bloody mayhem? Well, see to it that you do, my lord. May God guide our footsteps. Where's Sir Ratzik and Lady Stephanie? But Lady Stephanie? She's not here. She must be held somewhere else. Where? Where is she being held? And where's Sir Ratzig? I suppose the lady might be in her chamber. We don't know anything. They herded us here and told us not to move a muscle. Damn it all. We'll have to go back empty-handed. I really thought we could pull it off. We're not going anywhere. Not without my father and Lady Stephanie. 
And how are we meant to find them? They're not in the stables or anywhere nearby. You want to creep right inside the palace where Toth's men are everywhere? Yes. I can't leave them in Toth's hands. It was hard enough getting this far, but going inside is madness. What good will it do them if we get caught? Then we mustn't get caught. Listen, Hal, I can appreciate your stubbornness, usually. But this could cost us our heads. At least we save those other people. I suppose you're right. It would be foolhardy to go on. Oh, I'm glad you've come to your senses. Let's get the hell out of here, then. Come on, then. Let's get the fuck out of here before they catch us. Gorova! Fuck my ass! It seems, Robard, that we're running out of options. We don't have enough men to scale the walls with ladders. We can't afford to lose any more. We can only take Talmburg by a ruse or with superior numbers. Ruses have failed. We don't have superior numbers. Then we are left with no choice but to build a trebuchet. To demolish my own walls. <sighs> Where is Master Faithor? He's waiting. We sent for him as soon Bring as... him to me. Let's not waste time. Sir Divi. You will build me a trebuchet, Master Tobias. Uh, uh, a <laughs> trebuchet, my lord? That's not entirely in my field of expertise. We have to take back Talmberg. Yes, indeed, sir. I understand and that. you but... are the best engineer we can rely on in the whole fiefdom. Oh, well, thank you, my lord. But it's it's just that I've never built a trebuchet before. It's, this could take some time. Then you'd better get to it. Bernard will go over the plan of attack with you. Uh, I... Uh... Uh... Oh. Well, Master Tobias? You have much to do in little time. I will not keep you any longer. Indeed. Of course, sir. Thank you, my lord. How are the preparations proceeding in the other camps? As well as can be expected under the circumstances. There are still many things that need doing, but I just don't have the time for them. Mm. No, you don't. Henry. Yes, sir. I would like for you to help with the preparations in the encampments. Dudley, sir. Robard will brief you. That'll be all. the horde of Joshua, you startle me. I thought you were urban. What do you want? Sir, Tobias Fafar, the master builder and engineer from Scalitz, sends his greetings. Fafar? Tobias Fafar? I've heard of him. He invented an interesting mining machine. Uh, what does he need? Sir, have you heard what's been going on in Talmberg? I've heard a thing or two. Is it true the castle's been taken? It has, and we want to take it back. Master Fafar has been given the task of building a trebuchet, but he's not sure he can manage it. I doubt it myself. Uh, building siege engines is an entirely different kettle of fish than mining. Damn, I'd like to rain some boulders on those heathens of Sigismund's. Well, did you find anyone? I did. And... He's dead. He was an assassin, all right. Lord have mercy. Was it Pekar? Yes. I saw him all too clearly. So they are after me. I knew it. Sweet Jesus, there'll be more. I need to hide away somewhere. Come to Talmberg. 
You'll be surrounded by a whole garrison there. Yes. Yes, I suppose that does make sense. Uh, thank you, Henry. I'm in your debt. We'll meet at Talmberg. A well-chosen site. You want to strike the gate, do you? True. We don't want to do more damage than necessary. I quite understand. So Toth is holed up there, is he? Just so, Master Conrad. I hear you have some accounts to settle with him. Ah, not entirely. I've done with him. Sigismund trusted him more than me in his campaign against the Ottomans. And we all know how that ended up. Uh, how did it end up? Badly, my lord. The flower of French knighthood was slain there. Sigismund fled for his life. And I did too, I must confess. Be assured we shall not make the same mistake here. We do not intend to starve them into submission, but to break down the gate. I am at your service, my lords. We will build the trebuchet quickly. It will be ready in a matter of days. And I can supply, for example, Roquetta to sweep the foe from the battlements. Roquetta? I do not believe I've heard of such a term. Roquetta are missiles filled with black powder with a touch hole at the bottom to ignite it. They shoot forward, something like a hand cannon, but without rocks. The rocket is the missile. I see. But we don't have black powder in these parts. Nor cannon. Indeed. It should have occurred to me. But I am very fond of Roquetta, and I always think what Alexander the Great might have accomplished with them. I understand. We find ourselves in a conventional situation that demands a conventional solution. I'm still hoping that Toth will see sense and parley with us. He may well do so, especially when we set up the trebuchet on his doorstep. Now, let's see how strong those walls are. the first shot. The trebuchet has to be calibrated. That's perfectly normal. I'll have the range in no time. Move. Move. Damn it, I have to get to Sir Divish. Sir, they're coming. There's no time. Someone bring water. Breathe, man. You'll be all right. Who's coming? There's an army on the way. And they're carrying the colors of Havel Medic, of Valdek. And they're very close. Havel Medic is surely not coming to help us. Not that bastard. I have a score to sell with him. Gentlemen, Toth's reinforcements are about to descend on us. That swine. How many men? We don't know exactly, but there are many. And they will probably be here by dawn. So soon? How is it that we knew nothing about this before? The whole land is in chaos. It's a wonder we can find out anything at all. If they attack from the rear... We'd be finished. Just as Toth has been planning. The sneaky weasel. He's been one step ahead of us the whole time. Not this time, though. What are you thinking? Robard, how do you think the weather will be tomorrow? Uh, well, sir, uh, if my joints don't deceive me, and they rarely do, it'll rain. It'll rain buckets. Here. We'll make a stand here, I and Radzig's men. You will wait until they charge us, 
and then strike them from the rear. Here and here. If we succeed, we'll have it over and done with before they notice anything in Townbrook. It might just work. But we'll have to leave someone in the encampments in case they do come out of Talbrook. A few men will be all I need. Well, that depends on whether you can hold out. We don't even know how many there are. We will hold out. I'll give the orders to my men. We will be ready. Is their leader. What? This boy. You should show a little more respect, Divish. You'll need it when you kneel before Istvan. <laughs> oh, now the pup shows his teeth. Hmm. Istvan, you say? Not Sir Istvan? Or Lord Toth? Just how intimate are the two of you? I know him. He's Eric, Toth's captain and right-hand man. Finally, some good news. Shackle him and guard him closely. Those bastards want to destroy our trebuchet. Damages and too serious. So we can shoot. Not just yet. Sir, what are we waiting for? You've heard his threats, Robard. Do you want him to kill Radzik and my wife? We have to consider all our options. And it would be a shame to destroy the castle, too. But how do we get that rat out of there? Sir, I might have a solution. What about exchanging hostages? He was the captain at Vranjik. And he brought Istvan's reinforcements here. He seems to be on very um, intimate terms with Toth. He might be able to tell us something. And he might even be as valuable to his lord as Lady Stephanie and my father are to us. <laughs> You're your father's son, by God. You're a godson, lad. You're right. We'll interrogate this whore, son, and then decide what to do next. Come to my tent when you've rested. Well, Divish, I think the time has come to find out just how much Toth values our hostage. Do you want to parley with him yourself? I think I'll leave that to you, Hamish. So be it. I'll do my utmost. Bring the hostage below the battlements. Sir Istvan! What is it? Did our neighborly visit catch you unprepared? A little, but we've settled in nicely. And this fellow is enjoying our company so much, we simply can't get rid of him. It seems we are in similar situations. Perhaps it's time to send our respective guests home. Not a chance. Do you take me for a fucking fool? Be warned. If anything happens to Eric, I'll let every man jack here have his way with this bitch, and I'll dice Kobila into goulash meat. Nobly spoken, your grace. But for all I know, you may have done that already. Divish, I'm sorry. Greetings, friends. Fear not, Lord Toth is treating us like royalty. They're unharmed, as you can see. But don't try any tricks or they won't be for long, Hanush.
It seems your lord doesn't place any great value in you, boy. Go to hell. Oh. <coughs> I'm sorry. It looks like it's not going to be that easy. Well, at least we know they're alive. I didn't expect much of it anyway. He won't harm them as long as we have this fellow. Well, friends, what do you suggest? I'd say we have no choice but to attack. Hmm. It's a great risk, Robard, with Stephanie and Radzig inside. I know how you feel, sir, but Toth is no fool. They are his last safeguard. He will do nothing to harm them until he is sure of victory. Would you be saying that if it were your wife inside? Or your father? Well, let me point out that we have no choice anyway. We don't have enough supplies to keep men here for weeks, while gangs of brigands and Sigismund's army roam the countryside. Hmm. Toth won't agree to an exchange, and even if he did, we'd have to let him go. With all his men, he'd be a thorn in our sides till Judgment Day. Sir, a message has arrived. Oh, what is it? Margrave Jobst is approaching with his retinue and wants to speak with you. Jobst, you say? All right. Mm. What is he doing here? Who's Jobst? Jobst of Luxembourg is cousin to King Wenceslaus and Sigismund. He's the Margrave of Moravia. Only a year ago, he was collaborating with Sigismund and the League of Lords. He betrayed King Wenceslas and his ally Prokop. Now, he's changed sides, appointed himself the leader of the rebellion against Sigismund, and wants to liberate Wenceslas. Whichever way the wind blows. Nevertheless, it seems the decision is made for us. We don't want Jobst camping with us in front of our own castle like a band of gypsies. Hmm. I'm afraid you're right, Hanush. All right. We'll let the men rest a while and then attack. Come to me when everything is ready. Sir, we should give the order. Let's see if Istvan Toth can worm his way out of this one. Don't tempt fate, Hanush. Istvan! It's over! You want us to come and get you? I wouldn't advise that. Your friend Divish wants to see his wife alive again. And Sir Radzik? Are both hostages unharmed? For now, Hanush, unless circumstances change. Well, I'm glad to hear it. My guest is also safe and sound, but he's also quite keen to go home. I imagine you feel the same way. It's been a long time since you warmed yourself at your own hearth. I'm in no hurry. I've plenty of supplies here. Grand view and excellent company. What more could I want? Your freedom! Freedom? Freedom to get an arrow in the back? Sir, you're all noblemen here. All bound by honor. I give you my word as a knight and lord, and that of my companions. If you release Lady Stephanie and Sir Edzig, you may leave the castle with your men and go on your way unharmed. And just how far will we get? What good will it do me if your men attack us in the woods instead of here? 
if you give me your word of honor that you will leave and never return, I promise you safe passage to the boundary of this fiefdom. What happens after that is up to you and the will of God Almighty. Very well then, but I want a small safeguard. I'll give you her ladyship, but Radzig comes with me. I'll release him in scallets. Out of the question. Is our word not good enough for you? Is mine not good enough for you? I swear I'll release him when I get to a safe distance. I'll go with him, Hanush. Let the Lady Stephanie have her freedom now. Father! Don't worry, son. I trust Lord Toth's self-interest more than his word. He wouldn't be fool enough to harm me. If you're certain, Radzig. Prepare horses and supplies and tell your men to pull back. We'll come down. You heard him. Get to work. And any man who breaks his truce answers to me. So are you really going to let them go? My word is my bond, Henry. He's a cutthroat and a liar. Good men are dead because of him. What's to stop us from skewering him as soon as he sets foot outside? Our honour! If you let him go, he'll do the same again. Or worse, God's justice will find him. And then, he'll get a taste of my mace. If we break our word of honour, we have none. And without honour, we are nothing. Never fear. Your father will be all right. We'll hunt down those vermin yet. Bring the horses. Here she is, as I promised. Not a hair on her head armed. Devish. <laughs> Stephanie. Forgive me, husband. I'm sorry. For what? For letting them into the castle. Oh, come now, my dear. You're not to blame. I didn't know who he was. He said he was your friend. Never mind. Did he hurt you? No. I hope your word can be trusted. Certainly more than yours. If everything goes as agreed, I'll set Radzig free in Scalitz. If anyone tries to follow us, I'll kill him. We won't. My apologies for keeping you from your father, but you'll see each other soon enough. Oh, I almost forgot. Your sword. I expect you'll want it back after all the trouble you went to. Actually, you know what? I think I'll keep it, as a memento. This isn't over. I'll find you. I look forward to it. Yeah! Quick, to the battlements. We have to see which way they go. Oh, they really are heading for Scalitz. Mount up, Henry. You've heard what he'll do if we follow them. We're not going to follow them. We just have to collect your father. Or do you want him to walk back here when they release him? There's no sign of them. Move on. Ishban kept his word, sir. Not half as glad as I am, Your Grace. Well, we kept our word too. And now Toth has had his head start and he's fair game. Which way do they go? To the north, but I would be careful, Sir Hans. Fear not, Your Grace. I have twice as many men as he. <laughs> well, I won't keep you any longer. I'm sure the two of you have a lot to say to each other. Let's go!
father? I am. They treated me quite decently. Although they did steal my horse, so I'll have to go back on foot. It looks like it's all over. Not by a long shot. It won't be over until we get this mess cleared up. We catch that bastard. How could we let him go? Would you rather we killed him? Even if it meant Lady Stephanie and I died too? No, of course not. But what was to stop us from killing him after the exchange? Honor? Honor? If the word of honor of a nobleman could not be trusted, then he would never have agreed to the exchange. And where's the honor in abandoning your son? Hmm. You know how it is. We were young. It happened. And I couldn't marry a commoner. Then your father, I mean Martin, came along and took care of both of you. Well, he knew it. What? That I was your father? Certainly. He was a great man. He took you as his own. And I always kept an eye on you. Of that you can be sure. I know so little about his past. He told you nothing. Oddly enough, even though you don't have his blood, you're very like him. When he was around your age, he became bored of his trade and set out to see the world. He lived through many adventures, even fought in a war. In a war? Yes, in Poland, I believe. And I don't think he cared much for it. That's why he wanted me to stay at home. He spent some time in Prague, then settled in Kuttenberg. But it seems he quarreled with someone there and finally ended up here. You know the rest. I loved him, but even so, uh, I somehow always had a feeling I didn't quite fit in. It was in your blood, I suppose. <laughs> I lost the one thing I had left from him. Your sword. Ah, the sword. It's not my sword. It's yours. For a moment there, it was so near, yet so far. Oh, well, it can't be helped. It was almost within my grasp, but... Just then, I had something else on my mind. Well, I think we may yet have a chance to get it back. This business with Toth is not yet over, unfortunately. Well, that's a chance I'd welcome. Not just to get the sword, but that bastard Istvan, too. And then I'll find that German whore son who torched Scalitz, and I'll slay him with it. I'll never forget his face. Or his name. Mark Vart von Aulitz. Those are noble intentions, son. But don't forget there are other things in this world that are worth living for. Like what? Look around you. Blue skies overhead, green grass underfoot, beautiful girls. Good wine. A few good friends and a fine steed under your backside. Those are things worth living for. I can't deny that swine who killed your mother must pay for what he did. But it's better not to dwell too much on that at the cost of those other things. On the subject of steeds, I think we'll have to ride like the Knights Templar. How's that? Two up. One day I'll tell you how they got their seal. You can take the front. It's like I always imagined it would be, teaching my boy to ride. Although it would be better if you were a little smaller. My word, it's all go today, isn't it? I wonder who this is. I think I know. It's Margrave Jobst. The king's cousin? I wonder what he wants. I guess we'll find out soon enough.
doing well, son. Father. Come now. You know who sired you. That doesn't matter now. I miss you, Amar. I miss you very much. You'll be fine. We're proud of you. For what? I let you down. I, I lost the sword. I let that bastard get away. Don't be so hard on yourself. There was nothing you could have done to save us. And someone has to live and carry the torch. As for the sword, it's just a thing. You didn't want me fighting. Now look at me. Standing up to evil isn't the same as sowing its seeds. You did what was right. I have to leave you now. Oh, please. You know I can't stay. Will I ever see you again? God knows. Make her proud. were you dreaming about? I couldn't wake you, and it's well past dawn. Sir Radzik wants you at the upper castle. The lords are in council with Yobbs. Right. I'll go straight away. What is it? It's just... I don't know how to address you anymore. All of a sudden, you're Sir Radzig's son, hobnobbing with lords and ladies. And here's me, as common as muck. Oh, give over, you idiot. Do I look like a lord to you? Not really. You're as much a lord as I am a nun. And I've never looked good in a habit. <laughs> Get out of here! Or I'll have you clapped in the stocks. Hal, are you going to the meeting with Margrave Jobst as well? I am. What about Istvan? I assume that we didn't catch him? No. Because if we had, you'd be the first one to know. Have no fear. We'll get him eventually. I hope you're right. Anyway, let's go and see what Jobst wants from us. My lords, Christ's blessings on you all. And on you, Lord Gaben. And this is my son, Henry. I didn't know you had a son, Sir Redzig. It came as a bit of a surprise to young Henry, too. <laughs> this gentleman here is John II of Liechtenstein, a member of my council. I'm honored, gentlemen. Come join us. Margrave Jobs was just about to tell us the reason for his visit. Your Grace. I'm sure we're all agreed, Your Graces, that all this unrest must come to an end. This kingdom needs a king. The question is, which king? My cousin, Wenceslas IV, who is being held in captivity. I have to confess, my lord, that your answer surprises me a little. If I'm correctly informed until recently, you sided with your other cousin, Sigismund. That I cannot deny, and I have always stated my position plainly. But 
Times have changed. How they changed, Your Grace. Sir, there is one thing on which we undoubtedly concur. That King Wenceslas, unfortunately, did not inherit his father's gift for governing. Sadly, his failures have cost Bohemia, the nobles, and our whole Luxembourg family a great deal of money and effort. How did the king let it go so far, damn it? It's in his temperament. He cares only for wine, women, and the hunt. A king, in fact, who never wanted to be king. Then why didn't he just let his brother have the crown? Young sir, the crown weighs heavy when there are duties to be performed. But to surrender it means giving up great privileges, too. But he did surrender power to his brother. When things started getting out of hand, Wenceslas appealed to Sigismund for help in restoring order. What you're saying, Wenceslas has invited him here? This is starting to make my head spin. Actually, it makes sense when you think about it. Sigismund wanted to re-establish the power of the whole House of Luxembourg. He thought if he helped Wenceslas win the Imperial Crown, in return his brother would help him become the King of the Romans and leave the actual reign of Bohemia and the Empire to him. Sigismund would govern while Wenceslas could carry on doing what he was best at, enjoying the life of the Imperial Court. Why wasn't Wenceslas crowned Holy Roman Emperor long ago? He was already elected King of the Romans. All he had to do was go and let the Pope put the damn Imperial crown on his head. Who knows? Maybe he'd prefer hunting and consorting with bathhouse wenches to spending time with the Pope. Well, so would I, I must admit. <laughs> Sigismund's plan seemed sound enough, but it didn't quite work out, did it? It worked for a while. He and his brother reached an agreement. Sigismund took over administration of the kingdom and began planning Wenceslas's journey to Rome for the imperial coronation. But then Wenceslas realized he would just be a puppet with a crown. I must say, Margrave Jobst. Wenceslas and Prokop behave rather like naughty children in need of a good clout about the ears. Sigismund would agree. He was already planning his rule of Bohemia, and all of a sudden, the rug was pulled from under him. I'd say he lost his patience and decided he'd drag Wenceslas to the coronation, kicking and screaming if he had to. Just like a naughty child, as you say. So he abducted him and your brother Prokop too, if I heard correctly. Correct. And you helped him do it, if I heard correctly. Yes, your graces, it's true. I was there when Sigismund abducted Prokop. I thought everything could somehow be settled, that we could make my brother see sense. But Sigismund just wanted to put an end to the dispute once and for all, whatever the cost. There was nothing I could do to stop him. And that's one of the reasons why I'm here. Ah. The worst of it is that it was all for nothing. Instead of putting a stop to the revolt, it escalated it, and the result is this chaos we have today. That's true enough, sir. But I must admit now, I'm not sure what your position is. The king is incompetent, but we must protect him. The simple truth, gentlemen, is that for all of Wenceslas's faults, we have no one else. So we'll have to make do with his idleness. Ugh. People like him, though. <laughs> but what can we do now? Sigismund has the League of Lords behind him. Otto von Bergolf, Heinrich von Rosenberg... The situation has gotten completely out of control. Now even the nobles of the League of Lords are realizing that Sigismund wasn't the right choice. So now Bergolf is on your side. Are we to assemble an army together with him and face Sigismund on the field of battle? We're not in Hungary now. Such affairs may be settled elegantly, without unnecessary hostilities or expenses. I have negotiated an alliance with the Hungarian bishops, the Polish, and of course the Czech nobility, against Sigismund. Every day he is losing the ground under his feet, and that's why I need your help too. What kind of help, though? Sigismund has a massive army, and Rosenberg, Burghoff, and Prague are behind him. Do you have an army you could face him with? 
But that's not what I mean at all. There's been a revolt against Sigismund in Hungary. <laughs> partly due to my efforts, and now he'll have to choose whether he wants to gain the Bohemian crown, which is a very risky enterprise, or hold on to the Hungarian one. He can't have both. And there's a tough struggle awaiting him in Hungary. I'm not sure he'll win, and Rosenberg and Berghoff know it too. They're not stupid. If the Bohemian nobility stands together, they will turn. We are men of little consequence, Margrave. Radzig here lost everything because of his alliance with Wenceslas. Sir Divish came within a hair of the same fate. Even Ratte is defenseless against Sigismund and the League of Lords. What's more, Your Grace, King Wenceslas languishes in captivity in Vienna. He can't rule too well from there. And what do you propose? To sit with your arms folded till the Bohemian lands are turned to ashes like scarlets? We have to put a stop to this senseless war. And do you know, sir, what the true position of the League of Lords is? I'm not on the best of terms with them at this moment, so you'll have to ask them yourselves. Yes. Why not? I'll go and visit Burgov at his castle and we'll see what he tells me. <laughs> you know, that's not such a bad idea, young sir. True. Though a little risky. I doubt Burghoff would harm a blue-blooded envoy. And you can find out what he has to say about developments, and what the League of Lords is planning. Then we'll decide what to do next. I'll help you compose a letter to him. I'd like Henry to come with me. Why not? He's proven himself an able investigator, and he'll also be a good bodyguard if anything should happen. And I'll send Sir John here to Kutenberg to be my eyes and ears there. I believe both your reports will help us get a better grip on the situation. When can you set out? Just as soon as I pack my things. Excellent. Margrave Jobs and I will draft the letter. Get ready, and we'll meet back here. I will venture to see. I believe we have written it well, gentlemen. Without a doubt. No one could deduce from this whether we are Sigismund's allies or foes. <laughs> I must travel back to Brno now, but soon I will go to Brandenburg and I will stop here on the way back. By then, Sir Capon should be back and we can discuss how to proceed. Right. Before you leave, my lord, there is one thing that gives me no rest. Why did Sigismund come as a foe? It makes no sense. If I may, sir, I think I can explain. Oh, please enlighten us, young sir. I live not far from Hungary where Sigismund reigns. It is a savage country, and the constant war with the Turks has hardened the people. They need a monarch with an iron hand. So when Sigismund felt the wind of revolt, he reacted as he would at home. Only what works on the Hungarian nobles does not work here in Bohemia. Bringing order is one thing, but slaughtering and pillaging with a horde of barbarians quite another. Uh, what purpose does that serve? But Sigismund did give the Bohemian nobles a chance to take his side. It was only when they refused his ultimatum that he lost patience and took to the sword. As for the barbarians, he could afford nothing better. The Hungarian nobility would gain nothing from joining his campaign in Bohemia. He didn't have enough coin for a regular army, and so he recruited the Cumans. What he does not pay them, they make up for in plunder. But in the end, he didn't have enough to even satisfy the Cumans. That's why he raided Gutenberg and Scarlets. He wanted the silver. That makes sense. My lords, how's the letter coming along? It's done. Then we can be on our way. Now remember what we said, boy. All you have to do is deliver the letter, listen to the answer, and come back here. Don't provoke Burghoff in any way. Provoke? Me? Never, Uncle. We'll be back in a few days. Farewell, Your Graces. Come, Henry, my men are waiting. I wish you Godspeed.
Let's get to it then. I finally have the feeling we're doing something worthwhile. We're helping to save the king. Instead of saving his drunken majesty, I'd rather find that horse who murdered my parents, get the sword back from him, and skewer him with it. Cheer up, Henry. I have a feeling you'll get your chance one day, and it won't be long in coming. Forward, men! Our dentist Fortuna Yuva! Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you liked this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.